In CSS, when you want to create an animation or a transition, you have to write the class and uh, define it in your key element. However, with Tailwind CSS, we got already provided classes and it's always the best to use, to be honest. And we can use, for instance, transition. So here, okay, here, I got an example. When I pass my mouse, the button is moving up and down, okay? And to do that, I'm supposed to write, okay, in CSS that on hover, I want a transition is in out with a delay and et cetera, et cetera, okay? So actually what I'm going to do first is that I'm going to use the transform translate. So basically with translate, I can move an element on the top, on the right, on the left, etc., etc. So what I want to do is to use this minus translate. Okay. So that's what I'm going to type and especially on the button. So there, when I'm going to pass the button, I want to translate him. Okay. Negatively. So on the top by 50. Okay. Actually, it's not 50 pixels, I think it's less, okay? So there we go. Our element has moved to the top because I moved him this way, but it's too much. What I want to have, it's like, let's see when we pass from zero, okay? When we are on zero, it's, it's his initial position. And if I type one, suddenly, okay, it's moving up, okay? I want to do it only on hover. So I'm typing over. Okay, over translate y1, okay. And when I pass my mouse, it's moving only on hover. And with translate, we can move element this way. But however, it's just terrible like this. What I would like to have is a transition like this. So what I can do is to type simply, simply transition. And you are going to use this transition class a lot of the time, most of the time, because it's really easy that with transition, you just put a regular delay. I think it's uh, maybe 200 milliseconds, something like this. We, we got to look at it. But look, now I put transition. What's going to happen is that it's smoother. You know, it's less violent. It doesn't pass from directly the bottom minus two. OK, so let's look at this transition class and let's look at it. And what's happening there? It's that there is a duration basic of 150 milliseconds. And we got the timing function, cubic bezier, okay, that uh, help us to just say, please uh, be quiet. So most of the time, <laughs> you just have to use transition to apply these smooth changes, okay? But let's say that now we want to change the delay, we can use the delay. So I go on transition delay. And here I got many classes that help me to deal with the delay of my transition. So let's say I'm going to put the highest delay, which is delay 1000. Okay, so I'm going to go next to my transition, I'm going to delay 1000. Okay. And when I get back, I pass my mouse, I'm updating pass my mouse and I have to wait 1000 milliseconds. So one second to move. Okay. And when I move out, there we go. If I come back, there we go. If we go way upper and we update, look at that. Bam. Bam. This is how you can work with the transition delay. Okay. And <coughs> you can work also with the duration. Okay how much time the duration is going to uh, work. So let's add a duration 1000. So duration 1000, it's a lot. Huh? Those uh, examples are just uh, example for you. Uh, if I pass my mouse, I will have to wait once, one second and I will have to wait one second for the element to move again, again. Okay, so duration for the duration and for the delay, delay. Easy to understand. For the transition timing function, it's about to be the same. You got the is in entering, okay, is out, and is in out, okay. If you are familiar with that, you can use dynamically and directly the classes. If you are not familiar with is in out, is in uh, is in out, is in and is out, sorry. You can check, Google made a very good uh, guide about it. Tailwind CSS is not the best. 
for the animation. There's not a lot of animation. However, there are the animation that you need. And for instance, you get the animation spin to make a loader like this. We often need loaders like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going just to add animation spin to my button, which is a bit dumb because I don't want my button to turn like this. But as you see, the animation spin is already applied to it. Okay. Another animation that I can use is animation ping. And animation ping is very cool. However, here we, we, would, we won't need our button to get this animation also. But on the official documentation, we got a very good example. We often need to do um, notifications such as this one. And we would like to have something that glows. Animation ping is really useful for that. Also, you get animate pulse. And it's working for what we call skeletons. So you can create these elements that you see here, and that's a good example for the, for the course as an exercise. You can create uh, elements like this and just add the pulse class. It will create this effect of opacity, okay? It comes from white to more gray, then comes back to white, etc., etc., okay? Very, very useful. When we go down, we can also use the bounce animation that make it jump. So to that, you type animate bounce, of course. It's always animate slash, uh, animate, sorry, minus pulse, minus bounce, etc., etc. And of course, you can use that with over also. We often need to deal with the scale of images. And with Tailwind CSS, we can work with that with the scale class. So here we got example. We've got scale 100, which is the basic scale of our image. But let's say that we would like to have a bigger scale. So we can use from zero to 150, a bigger scale. And when I update, suddenly my image is bigger. However, as you see, I'm eating actually the text that is under. So got to be careful all the time to deal with the scale. And let's say that I want to reduce it. I can also do it to 25. And suddenly my image, uh, there is no 25. There is 50. Let's put 50. Okay, 50. Uh, there we go. There we go. We've got a, a lower sized image. We see here that we got to be careful always with the scale because it can work. Uh, uh, only if you deal with the content next to it. Otherwise, it will pass uh, over the content. Also, we can rotate our images and it goes from 0 to 180 degrees, of course. So let's say that we would like to have an image rotated of 90. So I got to remove the scale that I have here, rotate 90 degrees. What's going to happen is that my image is going to rotate 90 degrees. Okay. And now I'm here, I'm going to talk about the transform origin. Um, right now it's rotating on the center of the image, all right? But if I change the rotate origin and I put origin top left, okay, so if I put there here, origin top left, it's going to rotate from the top left. So it will be a total different, okay, uh, rotation, okay? And here it's not very nice, so I'm going to put rotate 45 and what's going to happen it's rotating you see from the the, the the top so let's say that now we're going to put a hover there and we're going to have some transition and we will get the effect there so i'm going to pass and when i pass on there we see that our image is rotating so it's a bit weird here because i have to stay on the image but we see it's rotating from the top. The transform origin help you to move um, the center of your image and where it is rotating from. So I can put, for instance, origin um, bottom, right? Okay, let's say that. And when I'm going to get back, I'm going to update and pass my mouse. There we go. We see that it's rotating from the bottom right, okay? Sometimes you want to create effects. It's really, really useful. The translate effect. We already saw it with the uh, button. We can use translate minus x minus 0 minus y 0, etc, etc. And for negative value, it's minus uh, on, on, on the first before uh, translate. And also what we can use is translate on the columns for the percentage of your uh, desktop. So if you want to translate um, on the vertical at 25, 
or on the horizontal at uh, 75, you got all those classes available there. Finally, we can use skew. And with skew, we can skew our image. So here we've got some example. I'm going to try to skew my image there. So I'm going to remove this, all of this transition. There we go, skew Y6. And what's gonna happen is that my image has been skewed. Okay, uh, I can skew it uh, way more, I think, to 12, okay? And I guess, I guess, there we go. I guess if I put a minus on the front of it and I update, it's going to skew it on the other side. Sometimes it can be useful. So transitions and animations and transform work together to help you to deal quickly with a specific behavior of your design or image.